I want to show you something. It's a fragment of a commencement speech given at the City University of New York, sometimes called CUNY, and it's given by this immigrant from Yemen who's a graduate, who's a graduating law student named Fatima Mohammed, and she sort of demonstrates how incredibly ungrateful she is um, of the situation that she finds herself in, but also how poorly educated she has been by that institution as she talks about institutional oppression while graduating from a law school, um, from a public university, but uh, and so on, right? And so the trouble is that you watch this, and it's hard to watch, but you watch this and there's applause because her classmates are similarly miseducated, right? They've heard the, the same lies that she ha she is parroting. Now the whole video is about 14 minutes long, it feels so much longer. It really does. It feels longer, but I'm not going to, you know, go through the whole 14 minutes with you. That would be ridiculous. But uh, together, I think we should watch some of the more interesting parts of the clip and talk about them. All right. So just bear with me on this. Uh, and it, by the way, if you want to see the whole thing, so, so you don't accuse me of taking it out of context, I'll put a link in the description. Okay. All right. And so I'm here to celebrate who and what we are, who you are. Like many of you, I chose CUNY School of Law for its articulated mission to be law in the service of human needs. One of very few legal institutions created to recognize that the law is a manifestation of white supremacy that continues to oppress and suppress people in this nation and around the world. Okay, let's just pause right there. Law is a manifestation of white supremacy that blah causes oppression. Law is a manifestation of white supremacy. She says as, as what? As a graduate of law. So if she believes what she says, she just got a degree in white supremacy. Um, so one could, you know, read something into that, but really, I mean, if the system of law is, is white, then the system of order is white. I'm not sure that that's, what she's trying to say, but that's certainly what she's saying. A society without any sort of law would be right, anarchy, just kind of by definition at that point. And I don't think anybody thinks that a society like that can hold itself together. For example, if she were to get up there and make this speech in a system without law and somebody wanted to assault her, they could without consequence because what law would pro prohibit it, right? I mean, the the different the different examples just kind of pile on top of each other after a while and it just be kind of becomes a bit of an argument and absurdity but these are things that she's never thought about or never been exposed to instead she parrots that law is you know a manifestation of white supremacy as if we're all supposed to applaud and they will because the institution that has educated her as a non-white woman you know has failed to do its job. And this is the case of so many different universities, right? She's, she's, as somebody who went to a Western university, she should have some sense of why we have a legal system at all, what its function really is. And no, it's not, you know, to spread oppression. And it's just kind of sick. But again, she's not just one person who's saying these things. She's, she's there in front of an audience who will applaud for her. And she's saying some of the very same things that you hear the modern left say uh, throughout the United States and frankly throughout the West at this point. Let's, let's continue a little bit longer. We joined this institution. We joined this institution to be equipped with the necessary legal skills to protect our communities, to protect the organizers fighting endlessly day in and out with no accolades, no cameras, no votes, no PhD grants working to lift the facade of legal neutrality and confront the systems of oppression that wreak violence on them. Systems of oppression created to feed an empire with a ravenous appetite for destruction and violence. I don't know if she means the US as the empire uh, in this particular case, or if she just means, you know, the West, if she means white people, I don't know what she means, but she's talking about He's talking to graduates of law, as a graduate of law, about dismantling the system of law that is the cause of oppression. Now, you can't really do that unless, 
You, know, you, you can't... If law itself is completely evil, right, in, in a way that is fundamental to its being, as she asserted, then you can't use that same evil in order to reconstruct it into something that's not evil. It doesn't make sense. It's, it's actually just really flawed logic. Now, you can say that there are some flaws with our current implementation of, you know, a justice system leading to, you know, certain injustices, but that's not actually what she's saying because instead she's choosing to engage in the politics of the left, which is we basically have to cause every uh, piece of, of Western culture uh, to crumble. We have to break down all of the different institutions thereof in order to build back in some, I don't know, Orwellian sense. Uh, let's continue a little bit longer here. Institutions created to intimidate, bully, and censor, and stifle the voices of those who resist. Well, no. I mean, a, a legal system is necessary in order to defend the weak from the strong. In some sense, it's there to do the opposite, right? Because a person who is a victim has no, no recourse. Um, against somebody who's who's stronger than him or her has no ability to get justice for himself and justice is an objective truth right um and therefore the law should be there properly used to enforce that sense of justice and to give accountability and to create order none of which she seems to have ever been exposed to she doesn't seem like she's ever been exposed to a, a single counter argument and that wouldn't surprise me in this again public university at which she is speaking about institutional oppression, um, apparently oblivious to the, the privilege that she has and, the, and that she's, she's using and exploiting. In this moment, in this moment of celebrating who we are, I want to celebrate CUNY Law as one of the few if not the only law school, to make a public statement defending the right of its students to organize and speak out against Israeli settler colonialism. She's going to go on for like several minutes now about how much she dislikes Israel. Um, so I'm going to skip forward uh, by quite a bit because it just kind of gets very dry and repetitive. I mean, again, if you want to see the whole thing, you can. But there's a different part that I'd like to sort of draw your eye to instead. So. Bear with me here, and let's go. Be the fuel for the fight against capitalism, racism, imperialism, and Zionism around the world. See, she's going to join the fight against, you know, there's, there's several in the list there, one of which was capitalism, um, uh, economic system, but nothing about what she's going to replace it with. I mean, is she going to replace that economic system with something like communism? And if so, is she proclaiming that that's in some way not oppressive? And that it doesn't have a massive death toll of millions of bodies attached to it? Is she unaware of the killing fields of Cambodia? Is she unaware, you know, of the USSR and what took place there within? Probably. Because despite going to a Western university, she emerges completely ignorant and yet filled with passion in that ignorance. Right? And that's that's one of the really disturbing things for me is when you have somebody who, you know, has a bunch of passion, but it's it's misdirected, it's it's directed towards falsehood. And our modern society says, well that's just great because that person's that person's passionate. So well, if they're going in the wrong direction rapidly, I'm not sure that's any better. Um I don't think it's any better than going in the right direction slowly. It's certainly not. And yet that's where we are because we we applaud and laud emotions over reason, and we don't actually educate people. So I kind of wanted to, to draw your eye to this because, again, it's so emblematic of what's really coming out of these different universities today. Someone who could come out and say, yeah, yeah I have a degree in law, but law is, is white supremacy and, <laughs> and always has been, and I'm opposed to every American institution as an immigrant. I mean, again, she's from Yemen. So but why are you here if you hate America so much? But you would think that if someone spent years inside of an institution that was really educating, like that was truly educating someone, then they would not have been able to make that speech. And yet, yet she did. And there was applause. And 
although on the internet I think she's gotten uh, the the ire of some higher profile uh, groups because she was so anti-Israel and the Jewish lobbying power. Uh, but for the, for those things that she said against America, against law, against you know all of this, it's just kind of that all that's just kind of ignored because it's accepted as normal. It's accepted as normal for somebody who's graduating from college to have these, uh, frankly, just wrong beliefs about order and the state of things. So if you know the example of why why your kids you know, most likely shouldn't be going to one of these colleges, especially not in these, especially not in the liberal arts, but in any case, just so many of them are so bad, please be selective uh, in your choosing. But we have to be aware of what we're fighting and what we're facing, and it's just grand, grandiose ignorance the people who have never really encountered truth. And I think that's, I think that's intentional. Hey, you're still here! Don't forget to give the video a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and share it with your friends. I've also got links in the description as to how you can help support my work. Thank you so much!